My name is James Whitelock. I'm the Managing Director of Thinking Circles. And today I'm joined by one of my amazing team members, uh, Kat Allenby, over here, uh, a Hi, great everyone. recruitment marketeer. Uh, we've also got Fiona, one of my other team members, in the chat. So if there's anything that you kind of uh, you want to kind of answer on the spot, then feel free to, uh, to message her directly in the chat. Uh, again, also any other questions we'll kind of answer as we get towards the end of the presentation. But today, right, we're going to pick up a little bit on uh, what Wendy was talking about. We're going to talk about you guys, recruitment marketeers, and how you become recruitment marketing leaders uh, and the importance of that within your business. Um, we're not going to talk about content. We're not going to talk about social. Uh, we're not going to talk about websites. We're going to talk about you and how important you guys are and how you can affect change and the kind of a change that uh hits the bottom line we're going to talk about how you can affect growth within your business uh so let me just um share my screen so the importance of recruitment marketing leadership and the foundation of growth as i said this is about you guys this is for any of the kind of marketeers uh, uh joining us today this is how you become invaluable within your business for anyone who's uh for any of the kind of founders or directors or recruitment marketing uh, uh, recruitment business owners this is telling you how important marketing is within your business and why you should be paying more attention to this. So let's start with a difficult bit. So the, admittedly, these stats are a little bit out of date, but the uh, but the principle still is still the same. This is the recruitment market pretty much in the UK, you know, uh, with a very, very small kind of uh, those kind of large recruitment businesses right at the top uh, and right down at the bottom of the period, we've got the majority of them. These businesses right at the bottom aren't probably don't have any marketing function uh, but their goal is to obviously to move up to small and medium and large uh, so how do they go about doing that you know at the minute they'll probably be kind of either one man band two man people five ten you know but haven't kind of gone down this kind of marketing route but their goal is still the same to be at the next stage and at next level uh, currently they'll be doing all the kind of ways that possibly we've talked about today and they'll be doing it themselves and marketing is one of the ways that they obviously should be doing it uh, we all know that Possibly they don't. Um, and this is kind of, you know, this is where we want to get to. We want to get our companies up, up moving up this pyramid. So the challenges of growth within the uh, recruitment businesses, you know, we will, we may all have worked within different parts of this and, and we continue to work and kind of work, work with these different size businesses from the startups, from the very small businesses where they've all got very different types of needs and things that they need, uh, they need help with from either a kind of sales point of view, a marketing point of view, even just kind of running their business kind of point of view. Uh, so let's think that we can start with the startups. So their kind of, their, their focus is on really just basically getting getting business in, service development and validating what they do and making sure that what they do is kind of, is scalable. Then you get to kind of grow up basically, where we call grow up. Uh, that's when they become much more kind of sales focused. And this is where they kind of, they hit these barriers that a lot of businesses that we're seeing in a minute are trying to hire the right people. Uh, next is the scale ups where they start to kind of grow up. There's a few more of them. There's maybe kind of, we, we put this as kind of 16 kind of uh, up and things like kind of their, their infrastructure is becoming their barrier. Their, 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 their priority is trying to scale and, uh, they're trying to kind of find their feet within the industries that they've now started to make their name within. And then you get to the really big boys. Uh, if you're all kind of, if you work in one of those, you probably kind of a lot, what we're going to talk about today, you might already be doing, but there's still something in it for you. Uh, so they're really kind of focusing on expansion uh, and the kind of barriers they come up against. So they're sitting in that kind of comfort zone and not knowing where to kind of go next. As the companies kind of go up through those kind of different stages of growth, there's obviously kind of a number of challenges that they're probably going to face that 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 kind of may may erode those those kind of growth potentials. So we thought we'd just take a quick look at some of those, um, <clears throat> many of which I'm sure you're you're all quite familiar with. So. The first one is kind of company name and, and brand architecture. Um, it's something that's much easier to, to get right if you if you look at this at the beginning of your of your journey, kind of when you're in a startup mode and kind of thinking about how that that brand name is going to kind of service you through your long term growth plans and kind of what you want to achieve, um, the markets that you're going to operate in, um, you know, to, to go for a really literal example. Um, you know, if you um, <clears throat> have a specific sector that you're that you're working in and your brand name is part of that, it makes it very hard for you for you then to different, differentiate or translate into other markets at a later stage. And obviously kind of then 
you know, rebranding or name changes further down the line is much trickier. And then you lose kind of the buy-in that you've got into your brand at an earlier stage of your growth. So kind of having a bit of thought about that at the beginning um, it, it is kind of much better. Um, fear of niche um, is it, it can be really scary for some businesses to really pinpoint the niche and, and what they're good at. Um, you know, it's very common in recruitment that, you know, people want to be all things to all people, make sure they're not missing out on anything. But actually, kind of when you think about a lot of the products and services that we want in any walk of life, you quite often look for a specialist in that area. And you're quite often happy to pay a premium for that specialist as well. So I think it's really important that recruitment can, that, that recruitment firms remember, you know, what is it that they are? What it, What is it that they're good at? And then kind of really delivering over and above on that that niche and being known for that specialism um, and just not being afraid to, to really own that. Um, difficulties with decision making, we'll, we'll come on to, to this in a bit, but, but kind of without having any kind of clarity on who you are, where you want to be, um, it can be really, really hard for people within the business to make <clears throat> clear decisions. Um, on kind of the future trajectory of the business. Um, inconsistent brand messaging and positioning, recruitment marketers um, will, will come across this a lot. Um, you know, different things being trying to be said, um, everyone saying that they're a market leader, um, but, but actually what does that really mean? Um, you know, what does it mean to your clients and customers? Um, what's actually going to resonate with them, kind of, you know, finding a really unique, unique way to talk about yourselves and to talk to your customers about what matters to them. So kind of having, having those inconsistent brand messages can be a real stumbling block to growth. Um, obviously, as James has said, kind of when businesses are in a startup mode, it can be just all about getting the business, getting, you know, getting the business in, just keeping the business going. But as you grow, it, the business needs to be run not just as a sales team, you kind of need growth goals that are beyond kind of those traditional NFI sales targets. So kind of that can be a real hindrance to teams as well. Um, limited specialist expertise um, or kind of leadership skills, you know, obviously smaller businesses have much more restricted budgets. And so often they can't afford to have full time specialists in certain kind of uh, skill lines so kind of that can be a real hindrance to them um sometimes you know firms will find other ways to bring in the specialist skills that they need to help them but but otherwise it can be a real challenge for them um something which i'm sure a lot of people um on today's session will be familiar with is being led by client demands um you know maybe your recruitment firm has owned their niche they're really kind of comfortable in that but a client a key client has come in and said We'd love you if you could find us this person over here and it's not an area that you work in and all of a sudden there's conversations of well we're going to start doing this and we need a pdf for it and we need a web page setting up um every marketer's worst nightmare um and it can be really it, it takes a lot of discipline to stick to your niche and to say no 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 this is what we do we don't do that over there um and kind of remembering you know, that that can be damaging to your brand because, you know, is there a demand for it beyond this key client that's asked for it? Does it fit with your, your business strategy? Um, is there anything else out there in the market that, that's saying this is a good move beyond that kind of initial discussion? So that, that's, that's a real kind of tricky one. Um, obviously, having good structure and role definition. So kind of, you know, what is marketing? What is ops? Well, sales, who's responsible for what, that, that can kind of be a real, real challenge as businesses grow. Um, again, something a lot of people will be very familiar here with is kind of your <clears throat> having a real internally focused proposition in terms of how you speak about yourselves. Um, how you talk about yourselves internally does not translate it externally. It doesn't necessarily mean anything to your clients and candidates. Um, so it's important to kind of have those clear external propositions and messages which talk about you know the problems that your your clients and candidates are facing and the solutions that you could you can offer to them um having a transactional mindset um it's all too easy for for particularly smaller recruitment firms to really fall into that short-term thinking you know 
getting over one fee, getting the fee, getting the fee, and kind of not thinking about those kind of long-term relationships. And the reality is, is that recruitment is, you know, it's a people-led industry. <clears throat> and as, you know, I think we've kind of discussed already, you know, people do business with people. You're, you know, most people will come back to those who they've had a good experience with, um, you know, earlier in their careers. And so putting the work into those relationships and nurturing them um, in the early days of your business it is only going to serve you well into the future. Um, and processes and tools. So kind of as you scale up, obviously, kind of, you know, the, the, the challenges that come with that and kind of making sure you're more efficient, making sure you have the right tools in place. Um, many businesses will go through some kind of digital transformation as they scale up in growth. Um, and this is where things like, you know, legacy systems, clunky processes can, you know, can all impact on, on kind of growth potential. Um, and, and kind of as we've mentioned, kind of, you know, all of those things as businesses are trying to, to scale up can you know lead to inefficiencies, um, <clears throat> low attrition rates, performance and productivity issues, lower return on investments, you know, lost opportunities, um, and low margins for the business. So there's a, there's a huge number of challenges that that recruitment businesses can face as they scale up. Uh, Kat, I've got a question for you on this. Is you know, kind of following on from the 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 previous uh slide around the kind of different sizes of of, of businesses is it a difference in um kind of how growth is affected by these these types of erosion i mean i would i would say so um i mean uh, the, the impacts are going to happen slower or faster depending on the size of firm depending on the you know the the scale of these issues and how much they're affecting things within the business but also the speed to correct them as well and how quickly you can turn things around um, it's much much harder obviously to retrofit some of these things and to um, readdress them the bigger the firm gets so it's much much better and easier to address these things like we say kind of at the earlier stage so that you you know avoid those kind of issues further down the line Um, so, <laughs> some of you may have seen this um, quite fun illustration, <laughs> uh, marketing land, that kind of mysterious place where we all hang out. Um, <laughs> and, and actually, it quite rightly points out that, that a lot of marketers or a lot of recruitment marketing starts much further down at the promotional stage. Um, and a lot of that is because you know, smaller recruitment firms in particular have a tendency to, you know, perhaps hire um, a junior marketer or they've perhaps brought someone else across from another side of the business who kind of gets marketing. Um, and it's, you know, it can be very much, you know, we need to do some blogs, we need to do some social, uh, we need to send some emails. Okay, that's great. But what's driving that? What's setting the direction for that? What's talk, What's setting the <clears throat> the agenda, the messaging, the content talking points. Um, and that all comes much further back. Um, so, you know, this is kind of where we talk about leadership marketing is that it's, you know, starting right at the top at that diagnosis stage. So looking at, um, you know, the kind of orientation of the market, doing your market research, um, you know, I know we're going to come onto this a little bit more in a minute, um, you know, looking at your competition, um, looking at threats and challenges, um, all your segmenting, your targeting, your positioning, um, and then you get on to kind of the the, the kind of the execution, execu I can't even say it, <laughs> execution <laughs> stage. <laughs> I've got what you've got, James and Louise. Um, and so it's really important to kind of start at that, that kind of top level area so that you can hit those next stages of growth. And kind of having that strategy in place is so important because you need to be able to refer back to it. You need to be able to remind yourself, this is where this is where we are, this is where we're going, and this is what we're doing. Because otherwise, the promotional side of it can become, you know, it can be easily swayed, dragged off in different directions. Um, and it's really good to kind of have that basis for everyone. Um, you, you know to kind of start from um so you know in an ideal world what you want is someone who can take all the insight from the business 
um, both the leaders, the frontline staff, um, and ensure that all of those kind of, you know, the brand, all of the marketing messages is supporting everything that you're doing and contributing to those growth goals beyond just the promotion. Um, amazing. So let's kind of dig into that a little kind of bit deeper. So uh, attract, delight and engage. Uh, if we use that as our definition for, for marketing, which is straight out of the HubSpot playbook, um, anyone who's kind of uh, spoken to me or listened to me speak before and knows I'm a bit of a, a HubSpot fanboy. So um, so that, let's, let's take that as our kind of definition and the way that we're going to try and grow our business and how we're going to talk to our audiences. Yeah, so it's about trying to kind of do this, you know, over and over again and making it profitable over and over again. Uh, serve and serve again as I've kind of got in this to, top processes um, uh, and about demonstrating return on investment. So we kind of we're going to touch on this ROI over and over again. Um, but to do that, you kind of need to have a bit more, much more kind of uh, holistic view of the business and a kind of end to end idea of the business. So many times the businesses that we kind of kind of work in, especially when they get quite large, they can become very siloed. And as marketeers, we can we, we sit in one of those kind of silos as well. Um, we've got no idea what the kind of the ops team are doing, what the HR team doing, what the training team is doing. Um, and through usually through no fault of our own. But, you know, if you're lucky enough to be in a business of that size, then you know it is you know you can make it you can make it your priority to be kind of a bit more uh, understanding of what's going on because those guys are also kind of affecting you know your brand your marketing and what's being kind of put out there so having a kind of understanding that where their touch points are really makes it a lot it, it makes your job uh, one a lot easier but also kind of puts you in that starts to put you in that kind of as a point of authority this so having that end to end view and when we obviously we're talking about uh, return on investment, you know, we're talking about kind of your spending, your budget. And in, that, in this case, we, we're talking about I'm going to spend money here and it's going to turn up and it's going to turn up three times, twice, four times, ten times over here. How do we know what they're doing? How do we kind of how, what, what are we doing? It? So you're paying for leads here. Are they converting? And, and are you measuring it? Now, you've heard that a lot today. Um but really, this is kind of the things that you're kind of, you know, the people at the top of the business, the people you're answering to, and the people who are kind of holding these purse strings really want to kind of understand more. So we've heard numerous ways that you can kind of go about doing this, Dave, but you can't really, you know, you've got to kind of understand that. And also, as I said, it's coming back to understanding how the other businesses, the other parts of the business are doing this as well, gives you a much more kind of um, leadership kind of uh, viewpoint on all of this. Um and one of the things you kind of, you know, you know, is that um, is that you're kind of you're kind of trying to articulate this, right? So this is this is your, one of your roles, you know, is, is understanding everything that's kind of going on a business, understanding the position of the business, really, you know, and the position again, this positioning. We're going to come around to this. We'll tackle this kind of a little bit later on. Uh, you know, what is your business does? How your business works? Who you're doing it for? You know, and how you can kind of then articulate that. And empower that through the rest of the business as well uh, is kind of become is is really your role. Uh, it may be not a role that you kind of currently have, but it should be the role that you're kind of taking on. Um, building brands with that converts, right? Uh, we've heard about kind of brand building and mark and uh, and that kind of thing already today. But you'll be just as a, you'll be aware that you know a brand just isn't your logo. It isn't your website. You know, it is all the staff within your business. It's all the customers of your business. It's the candidates. It's your peers. It's even your competitors, right? You know, these are the th these are the areas that make up what people think about your brand. Uh, so having this kind of again a view of that is also going to be really important. Um, uh, you know, we've all had these jokes about the kind of coloring in department. I think Wendy even kind of made that towards the end. You know, <laughs> we're beyond that, right? This is not what we do. Uh, that is part of that part of that kind of the 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 you know our department's responsibility, but it's not what we do. Okay, uh, so marketing is more in the end a business strategy than it is just a kind of sole marketing strategy, right? You are kind of defining this really for the top of business, and if you can get that across to the people at the top of business, that definitely puts you in that kind of position of leadership. Uh, and from there, you go on to understand what the kind of business goals is. You get included in all that kind of thing, and you then you start aligning your marketing goals to the business goals. So let's kind James, of dive. Just on that. Sorry, you, sorry, sorry. That go on. About, oh, sorry. Um, when we're talking about the objectives and the KPIs, yes. who who should be setting those? Is it those departmental departmental objectives? Is it the the business owners at the top, or is it the departments themselves? Um, 
it kind of depends on the size of the business, right? Like, like we've kind of, like you mentioned in the pre, kind of previous slides, it's going to be different for different businesses. Some businesses aren't going to have these departments at all. Um, so it's going to be the founders and the directors and the, and the, and the managers who are going to kind of set these, uh, set these objectives. Um, in when you get to a bigger business, it's probably going to be departmentally. They're going to have, they're going to be kind of set targets and then they're going to set the kind of these, these goals and, and KPIs within the, within their department based on the kind of targets they're given. But, it was also, you know, that doesn't mean that marketing shouldn't be kind of understanding of what these goals are, because you know, as, a, as a marketeer, you can definitely help them kind of meet those targets. And again, what this is all about is that then putting you in a position of leadership within the business. So you become invaluable. And that's what we want to kind of everybody listening to today become invaluable to your business. So let's dive a bit further into the uh, into the process. Um, so these are the foundations really to get in your strategy in place. So, uh, I've already mentioned it once, but right at the center of this is position. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to, we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into that in a little bit, but you know, if you're, if you, if you haven't kind of gone through this process of understanding kind of who you are, what you do, why you do it and who you do it for, you know, this is going to be key to a lot of the things that we're going to, going to talk about. This is kind of one of the kind of the linchpins. Um, and it's a kind of, uh, essential that you know as a, the marketing leaders you can articulate this for the rest of the business and then you know the business then takes it on and they they, they kind of have to take on ownership of this but it's you you're there to articulate this for them um so where are we now you know uh you know this this is the understanding uh the gaps uh of the perception of your audiences basically so this is the thing I think you need to just kind of do. This is, this is all kind of research based really at this stage. Uh, you need to understand what the kind of um, what, is, what, you're, what the market thinks of you. OK, so this is something that kind of we should be doing, uh, you know, regularly if possible, but at least kind of once a year. What is the perception of us within within the market? Um, can you measure it? Right. Is it if not? If not. That's another gap there. We need to understand why, you know, why people think this way and how and, and what kind of sentiment is felt about us within the business um and from there you go to understand your strengths and your weaknesses strengths and weaknesses are SWOT, ana SWOT analysis or summary these are the kind of things that you know if you're not kind of doing already then take it on your on your own kind of back to try and kind of get, get on board and do it anyway you know this is an amazing kind of kind of kind of um uh piece of research you can take to your leadership team you know and so they can understand the things that are working the things that aren't working from your perspective that because of the research you've just given uh, uh you just delivered uh then you can decide where where you want to be and why you know usually this is the kind of thing that's kind of uh laid out by the founders or the board members or the key stakeholders um but in the end it's our job to convert what their vision into these goals right so we need to understand this we need to kind of be able to kind of then put that into right we you, uh, we want to be here this is how we're going to do it right it is uh, i fundamentally believe this is definitely definitely part of the your marketing leader's role to do these kinds of things uh, and how do you do that? Well, obviously, you need to be in a position to be able to talk to your leadership teams and workshop this kind of thing out and understand that, basically. Um, how do you get there? Well, what tends to happen is you don't want to get there too early, right? So this whole kind of red line in the middle is uh, is, is kind of fundamental to all these kinds of all these things. And you need to do the stuff above this to get there. Uh, as kind of Kat has said on uh, a couple of times, so easy especially when you're in these kind of growth stages of a recruitment a recruitment business is to get waylaid you're going to get pulled in every direction um uh, but really you want to try and kind of uh, stick to your guns um you know you know niche niche works well you know as the americans say the riches are in the niches um uh, which uh, uh, if they're going to kind of murder the english language there's that's a, a prime <laughs> example of it right there uh, but this is the kind of thing that you are there to help kind of define within your business uh and as i said this red line is kind of fund fundamental and we're going to kind of dive a bit further into this kind of red line right in the middle a little bit more uh so if we just kind of just quickly skip to kind of the objectives kind of picking up on what we kind of talked about before um you know as i said it is it is your job to kind of <laughs> make sure you understand uh you know what all of these departments are doing uh even if there are no departments right there'll be kind of some kind of someone who's taking who's in charge of this within your business you know if you don't have a hr department there'll be someone somewhere who has and you know it's your job to kind of understand a bit more about this same with the finance same with ops and sales okay uh within kind of marketing you know marketing and sales become kind of quite could become easily aligned so that's where you kind of really kind of want to start uh, uh, and finally, we're kind of um, talking about uh, the kind of priorities and, and 
and bring it back um, brand building converting and over and over again and that really is the kind of the bit once you've done everything else that's the job that's the day job there right is you're kind of continuing to build your brand you're continuing to convert you're continuing to do this over and over again and that's the bit that kind of adds the growth and adds the value uh, and that's where you can kind of prove your worth prove your effectiveness uh, again and proving leadership So let's dive a little bit deeper into that kind of red line, um, as I said. So um, a growth strategy is probably something that a lot of businesses don't necessarily uh, don't necessarily do. Oh, we've only got five minutes already. Wow. Um, <laughs> I best kind of I'm going to speed I'm going to speed up then a little bit. Um, so a growth strategy really is um, is understanding. It's it's a fancy word basically in the end for your kind of marketing strategy, right? But it resonates a bit better up, 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 upstream, basically, with your kind of uh, with your business. And is that kind of thing around understanding where you sit within the market uh, and not being kind of pulled in all different directions and muddying the waters? Um, so it's basically again how you want the market to per perceive you. And this is just basic. This is something you can just present back to your leadership team. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and something that can help you define your uniqueness. Now, this is something again that will kind of come up up again is how you kind of define how you become how you how you become unique you know it's not all the time about being the biggest or being the best it's about being that uniqueness you know a lot we've heard a lot of times today people say that they they do this better than that do their better than that. be authentic and prove that and find definitely differently define what your uniqueness is um uh so that's kind of you know your growth strategy and you know that then leads into your kind of positioning and positioning really is you know you know, I mean, we do this a lot for the, our clients, and it can simply be something as simple as a, you know, a sentence. You know, who you are, what you do, why you do, it, and and um, and how you, and how you do it better than everyone else. Pretty simple, but it becomes a mantra that you live by, um, and uh, it can be so powerful. It's the thing that sits on your website, the first people read. You know, it's the thing that sits on the on the bottom of your emails, really. Next up is your identity. And as I said already, right, this is not just your logos. This is kind of, this is about understanding and articulating what your kind of uh, business does and how it's perceived. You know, things like the, that five second rule. Do we, do people know what you do within that kind of, when they, when they land on your site, when they land elsewhere and any of your touch points, do they know what you do? You know, it's like your kind of uh, elevator pitch. So yes, it does include kind of your collateral. This is a bit, the kind of doing bit of your job kind of comes into but it's really about that kind of understanding that base recognition. What are you going to be known for and how are you going to be recognized and how do you want people to perceive you? Uh, and your proposition is just another, it's a kind of fancy word for kind of what you offer. You know, it's not about sitting there kind of talking about you, yourself and the teams. This is much more about understanding kind of what the audiences want from you and explaining that. Um, you know, this is kind of that, you know, you all have been in the office and how many times have you heard a colleague, you know, stumbling over a phone call where they're, where they're trying to explain to you know, on our cold call, what you do, you sit there wincing away. And it's like, there's a much more succinct way of doing that. This is where this kind of comes into play. And as marketing leaders, we can kind of make sure we can drive this, we can kind of set this up for the business so they don't have those kind of really kind of, um, you know, upsetting scenes where we're kind of sitting there wincing and kind of, uh, you know, uh, raising eyebrows. And in the end, what this does is great for kind of, uh, you know, this helps bring people onto the business. This helps kind of upselling, cross-selling, everything you want your business to do it helps you to grow. Um, <clears throat> so some really great points there, some you know, lots of information there from James on kind of how businesses can kind of step up for growth. So kind of, you know, assessing the clear direction for the business, so knowing where you've come from, what market it is that you're in, um, your place within it and where you're going. Um, clarifying your position, your identity, your proposition. So all of that to kind of strengthen your brand, um, having a solid market strategy. So, you know, ensuring all the different areas of the business are aligned, everyone's on the same page, um, you're all heading in the same direction. And then finally, kind of once you've got all of that in place, delivering those high impact marketing campaigns uh, and ensuring all of the, the, the kind of campaigns, the messages all contribute towards your growth goals and deliver on the ROI. Um, and then we'll just talk very quickly about um, sort of finding the right team and kind of what that looks like, because obviously you can't um, necessarily deliver all of this without the, the kind of right people in place. So, um, you know, who is a marketing leader and what do, what do they look like? 
Um, I mean, it's it is a different skill set to just delivering marketing. Um, you know, you've got to be able to communicate um, as a director and a board level and get those people on board. Um, you know, you need to be able to align your business goals and your marketing activity um, because, uh, you know, there's no point if the marketing is going off in this direction and actually the business wants to achieve this. Um, and also you've got to be very st strategic and results focused in order to, order to deliver that. So ideally you need someone who can lead you through this process that we've just discussed and help you to articulate and differentiate yourself and obviously kind of, you know, understand the business and communicate clearly and effectively. Um, and then just going on to our last slide before, um, I think Louise wants to do questions. So it's, you know, it's, it is about having a deeper understanding <clears throat> of the company um, and, and kind of your customers and, and what their needs and wants are. Um, you've got to be able to create that 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 buy-in at that top well, at all, at all levels really, but initially kind of at that top level. Um, and kind of having that understanding um, and being able to take the, the owners of the business and your colleagues on a journey with you and what you're trying to achieve and articulate that you know, the ability to influence and to kind of, you know, have difficult conversations, to push back where possible, to gain trust and speak with confidence, um, to understand those nuances of the business. Um, you know, it, once you're at that, that leadership level, it very much becomes, communication almost becomes far more important because as much as kind of having the strategic, um, you, you know, having a strategic mindset, um, and the ability to understand the business is, is great. If you can't communicate that to the board and if you can't, if they can't understand what you're doing and what you're achieving, um, then then it all becomes kind of, you know, not useless, but it, you know, it doesn't have the the impact and you will not have the effectiveness that, that you potentially can. So the 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 true effectiveness from being a market leader comes from kind of sitting at that top level of having those conversations. Um, and if you're not at the table, then you need to get your seat, self a seat at the table to have those conversations, because otherwise it just becomes more of those admin requests. Can you can you jazz it up? Can you create this PDF? We've just set up this new team over. We've set up a new office yesterday, by the way. Could you do this by having a seat at the table and being part of those conversations at the start? You can help to, you know, be part of the conversations to understand where things are going and to, to create help create direction for the business as well um, from a marketing perspective and, and, and what's right.